coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Yeah, I was like, man, just let the chips fall where they may, because <laughs> after seeing some of the things I seen, man, it was, yeah, I just had to have that Bethlehem, man, and I set out on a mission to get it, you know, I told y'all in another interview, uh, I think I was on the other show and I was like, you know, when I first got it, man, I remember I had to go, you know, in the visiting room, I had to price it and see what it wanted for, you know, you could get cash back then through the visiting room, you know, that was something that, that was relatively easy back then, um, man, I got that cash, I went to a dude that was in there, man, a uh, 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 salute, shout out to old dude named P.I., at the time, man, he was an old gangster that had been locked up then, back then, about 30 years. And um, he had he had a lot of pool on there, man. He had his hands in a lot of different things. And uh, I had spoken to him a couple of times, and he was like, you know, it was kind of like uh, Shawshank's Redemption Red, man. He was the dude you go to if you wanted anything because he just had his hands in everything. So I was like, oh, man, yeah, I need, I need one of them Bethlehems, man. And he was like, you got some money? And I told him I can get some. He told me what I need to get, man, and come holler at him when I get it. And you know, that's what I did. I went down there, I hollered at him, man. I gave him the money. You know, uh, he told me to, uh, I had my coat and everything on. He told me to put my arms through the bars. I put my arms through the bars and he slid, slid it right in the sleeve of my coat. And I just stood there and talked to him for a minute and peeled off, put my arms in my pocket and walked away. And I can remember, man, when I got back to my cell, and I, I I pulled it out, you know, when I was by myself, and and I looked at it, man. And the first thing I could remember, man, like I said before, was just seeing it, man. It was a real, real knife, man. I'm talking about with the jagged edges on it that will put you in the mind of the knife, like Rambo had. Had the jagged edges on it, had the rubber grip, and it had a compass on the back of it. And I was like, oh man. So I'm I'm like. Exhilarated, I'm excited, man. I'm feeling like you know, empowered. Like now, you know, you know, come on with it, you know. But at the same time, you know, less than you know, minute or something later, man, I, I was terrified because I'm thinking, I just got in here and I got this. What they got out there, you know what I'm saying? What's out there? What you know what I'm saying? This I just got here, so it was just crazy, man. Just you know, uh, the wall was just different, man. It was a different place. Different environment, different breed of dudes. You know, most dudes in here, they, they, they done did hard time. They done did a lot of time. They already own some other stuff, and they ain't playing. They out to get whatever they can get, however they can get it, and don't matter who in their way, they going to move them. You know, so you had to know that. You had to understand that. You had to know the dynamics of what you was dealing with, man. So I'm learning on the fly as I go, you uh, know. It was crazy, man. It, 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 I just remember just seeing things that was <coughs> like blowing my mind. You know, it was just different. So y'all know I'm still getting over this cold, so I'm rumbling with y'all. I'm rumbling, but um, it was different, man. Um, I just was seeing the way cats move, the, the way cats act, the way they talk, the way they carry themselves, and like I said, they ain't had no shakedowns, man. So you know. Everybody was 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 packing, man. Everybody got the Bethlehem, man. You know, so you get an altercation nine times out of ten, it's gonna be a valid, you know, possibly deadly altercation. So I ain't want to talk to nobody. I ain't want to get to know nobody. I ain't want to, you know, what I'm saying none of that type of stuff, man. And it's hard to do because you know you used to be in social. You come from you know society. I ain't too far moved from society. So now. You in a different environment. You in a different element. You got to do what you got to do. And when you don't know nobody, you ain't trying to know nobody because you don't know what somebody's trying to know you for. So it, you know, I just watched, man, and I just try to learn, man, man. Casting there was like super crazy. I told you they had four tiers in there, so you had a lot. And, and, and let me tell you something. The second tier to me was high, you know. Third and fourth, that's just that's crazy. It just was so high in the air, man. If you fall from over that fourth tier, chances are you're gonna die. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. And 
the crazy thing about it was you had dudes in there, man. A lot of them was white dudes, but you had some black dudes too. Man, these dudes, instead of walking around to the end and climbing up the stairs and going up the stairs, these dudes would climb on the out, outer perimeter of the of, of, of the tier, man. I mean, they would go from one tier and jump, grab it, and climb up. If they miss and they fall, man, that's it. It's over, kaput. You know what I'm saying? And you seen dudes doing this all the time, just... You know, I guess they was used to it. They had been doing it for years, and, and it didn't bother them. It didn't phase them. But every time I used to look at them doing it, man, I used to just be like, man, these cats is crazy. They climbed the tiers, man, like spider monkeys, man, like it was nothing. And um, fourth tier, third tier, drop all the way down. You get dudes there, come down, come down, just be grabbing the bar, grabbing the bar, going all the way down. I'm like, man, these cats is crazy. But they did it on a regular basis, man. I seen a, one or two cats fall. Never nobody fall. I never seen nobody fall from the third or fourth tier, but I seen dudes fall from the second tier, like Mr. Bar fell. I seen one dude fall. He broke broke his ankle. I seen another dude fall, man. He just got hurt. But it, it was just crazy, man. But that's just the environment in there. It just was different. You know what I'm saying? All the uh all the people that came out <coughs> all the people that came out, excuse me. All the people that came out when I came out, you know. They moved around. You had a dude at the end. He was the barber. He used to go down there and he used to cut hair. And he used to be in the corner just cutting hair. And dudes was getting in line to get the haircuts, man. I can remember one of the one of the bigger incidents that I seen. They was down there, man, in line to get a haircut. And the dude was sitting in the chair. The barber cutting his hair. He's just talking to him. They tripping. There's two or three other dudes. They laughing. They giggling. There's another dude. He walking in and out of the situation. I was in the back. I was trying to get a cut too, but I was playing in the back. It's another dude. He walking around. He walking around. He ain't saying nothing. Ain't nobody saying nothing to him. They carrying on their regular conversation, man. And um, next thing you know, man, he just pulled out the Bethlehem, man, and hit the dude that was getting the haircut. Wop, wop, wop. He just started hitting him, and it was like crazy. The barber dude, he bagged up. He like, what's going on? <coughs> and the other dudes, <coughs> they was sitting there. They, they faded back. He turned around and he started hitting one of them dudes. So I don't know what the beef was. They must have already had prior beef. They must have already been in an altercation. Something was going on, but it was crazy. It was I was just looking. I'm in awe because, like I say, when you see things like that and you're in a controlled environment, it ain't like you can run. Where you going? You know what I'm saying? Then you're going to draw attention to yourself where someone might think that you're involved in it. So you do might get at you. So you just got to stand your position, stay where you are, and act like it ain't nothing happening. But when you ain't used to seeing that and you knew like me, I'm like, you know, that was hard to do, but you just had to hold your position and just stay firm. And it was just like crazy, man. It was chaotic. And man, he just hit him. And then he started chasing the other dude, man. Dude started scattering a little bit. There was around the barber shop, man. It, it, it was just a wild scene. And then like I say, dude finished doing what they doing, man. They just tuck their jumps and get to walking, you know what I'm saying? And moving around. The police ain't coming in there and ain't nobody coming in there to save you. Ain't nobody coming in there to save you on your own, man. Dudes is bleeding and leaking and walking around, and dudes is acting like, "What's up, man? Oh yeah, it's up. he did it, man. You know, and they like, give me a jump, give me, you know." And it's, it's it's chaotic, man. And you know, I'm seeing all of this stuff, and I'm trying to process all this stuff. And I'm new, I'm young, I'm green, and in your mind, man, it's wicked because you saying to yourself, "Wow, man, you know what I'm saying? What what type of, you know what I'm saying? Where am I at?" You know what I'm saying? And it's this everyday life. And then you got to get it in your mind of this everyday life. Then how you gonna live like this, man? Then looking at the time that I had, I'm saying to myself, man, it's just a hard thing to process, man. It's, it's really hard to process. That's when you come to the to, to your um, you know, you 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 get to your moment of of what you're gonna do and how you're gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we go outside for wreck. Dudes go outside, man. They lifting weights. They playing basketball. They had the boxing ring out there, man. Dudes is out there sparring each other. But these dudes, man, you see these dudes going to play basketball, man. They got their gym clothes on, man. They pull their sweats off. They got shorts on. And you'll see them with the ace bandage up under their shorts, wrapping around their shorts. They got their knife with the ace bandage. They got the Bethlehem tucked in their ace bandage, man, playing ball. So if something jump off on the basketball court, they going to whip out. You know what I'm saying? You get fouled too hard, they going to whip out. Dudes get the argon, they going to whip out. You know what I'm saying? Dudes, it's knife fighting on the basketball court. 
I mean, it's just insanity, man. It's just like a world that I ain't even ever seen before. And me, I hadn't even seen that type of stuff on TV, you know what I'm saying, in the movies. And when you see stuff in the movies and the little, the little uh, prison movies and stuff, it, it, you know what I'm saying, that stuff is mostly fabricated and mostly, you know, misleading because when you get in on the inside, the whole thing is different. Everything is different. You know what I'm saying? This reality, this real life, this stuff is right in your face. You seeing it. You seeing blood. You seeing knives go in and out of dudes. You seeing dudes get killed. You seeing dudes get their head bust open. You seeing dudes get jumped. You seeing dudes just, you know what I'm saying, attack the police. So it's it's different, man. It's just, a, it, like I say, it's a lot to process. And you got to process all that information, man, and be wondering what, you know what I'm saying, what's going on, how am I going to do it? Only thing you locking in your mind, I know the only thing I was locking in my mind is, I got this joint on me, I, you know, I, I just pray don't nobody mess with me, you know what I'm saying, don't nobody mess with me because I'm, I'm going to use it, I'm going to use it, and I, I'm not going to be playing with it, and, and, you know, whatever happens, happens, because one thing I knew for sure, and, and, and that uh, follow me through my hope. I definitely ain't want to be the, the, on the, on the uh, business end of that Bethlehem. I did not want to be on the business end of that Bethlehem ever. You know what I'm saying? So if it was gonna be, if it was gonna be the Bethlehem in play. I was gonna be using it and not gonna be taking it because I, I couldn't take it. You know what I'm saying? And like I say, to see it, it it would change you. It changed your mentality. It changed the way you look at things. You know, now you may not have never even thought in your mind about, you know, actually stabbing somebody, but when you in those these situations, these situations cause for different type of attitude, different type of, 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 of way of looking at things. So that was never even in my mind. But when I'm in prison and I'm seeing this stuff, I'm like, yeah, it's gonna be him instead of me. It's gonna be him instead of me, and most definitely. You know, so like I said, I was adjusting, man, my mind frame was changing and um you know, to be totally honest with you, man, I was, I was, uh, I was, I was, I was starting to become like super depressed, man. I mean, I was becoming super depressed because I was looking at the outcome of my situation. You know, the appeals weren't looking good. I had a bum lawyer from the beginning, you know, so I'm trying to set my mind to doing the time that I got to do. And I was already misled. I was already told I probably ain't got to do it like 12 years, 13 years. You know, and I might go make parole. I got to do is stay out of trouble. Then I'm looking at my environment. I'm like, how is that even possible? How is it even possible that you're going to stay out of trouble, number one? And number two, 12 to 13 years made, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the totality of the time that I had don't seem like a lot. But in real life, 12 to 13 years, man, that's a long time. That's a long time and it's an extra long time to be incarcerated, to be without your freedom, to be away from your family, to be away from, you know, the things you love, the things that bring you joy, the things that bring you smiles and happiness. That's a long, long time, you know? And then at my age that I am, my early 20s, I'm like, man, come on, man. You know, I ain't even, you know, 12, 13 years. That's like now already like 90% of my life, 80, 90% of my life. So to say that you got to do that you know what I'm saying, ahead of you and you barely even live that, it's just a lot to, to, to intake into your brain. And um, I was trying to process it, man, and I ain't gonna tell you no, no lie, I was struggling. I was struggling hard, man. I mean, this this time that I was at the wall, man, the short period that I was there, it, you know, it probably was the lowest point of, 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 of my entire bit because of my mentality, my, me trying to understand what was ahead of me, what I actually had to do, and what I had actually had to go through to, to, to get to the point of what I figured I had to do when it was 12, 15 years. I'm looking at everything around me, I'm looking at my surroundings, my environment, the way things is going. I'm saying to myself, I, I don't even know if I could do this. I don't even know if I could do this. So, to, to be honest with you, man, I was really probably the closest that I ever been to, you know what I'm saying, to being suicidal, you know what I'm saying? Because I was even contemplating that, man, I don't even want to live if I got to live like this. I don't even want to go through this if I got to go this long, if I got to go through all of these type of uh, 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 incidents, all these type of uh, 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 things every day. You got to go through this, then you got to wake up tomorrow, you got to face this again, then you got to wake up the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. And it's on and it's on and it's on and it's on. So, 
man, you know, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was really, uh, I was really in a bind at this time, man. I was really uh, going through it, you know, mentally and trying to prepare myself for what I had to do. And uh, it was by far not easy, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, I'm thinking about on it now. <coughs> Excuse me. When I get the feelings that I had then, you know, I can remember them. The way it was, man, what my mind frame was. And that's a, that's a, that, 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 that is a uh, crazy thing, man. When you have to contemplate on yourself or look in the mirror and ask yourself, do you do you really want to continue to live if, if this is how you got to live? You know what I'm saying? Do you want to do this? And the second question after you even answer that is, can you do this? You know, see what I'm saying? Are you prepared to do what it takes to do this? And see, that's what I think a lot of dudes in the streets and out here now, even now, 30 some years later, after I've been removed and went and went through the process of what I done went through, these dudes out here are still the same as what I was. They just as green as a pool table out here. They don't understand what they're gonna have to do when they get in there. They don't understand what they're gonna have to go through. They don't understand that this is a daily process that you're gonna have to continually, continually reinforce, you know what I'm saying, your resolve inside of you that, hey, I got to get through this. You see what I'm saying? And that takes a whole lot of resolve, man. A whole lot of, uh, it takes a whole lot, man. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to endurance, man. To, to say to yourself that no matter what comes, I'm going to, I'm going to thug it out. I got to. Because without it, you know, it ain't no survival. Without, without it, it ain't no survival. You can't survive. You see what I'm saying? You got to be willing to deal with whatever comes to you, whenever it comes to you, however it comes to you, in order to survive, to get to the day that you could possibly get out, to get to the day that you could possibly get to your release date. You got to be willing to do whatever it takes. You see what I'm saying? And that takes a mindset that you may not have. That takes a mindset that you have to really lock into. And that's what I had to do to myself, man. I had to decide whether I wanted to live or die, man. And in order to say you want to live, you, you have to say, well, this is what I'm willing to do, and this is what I'm going to do, no matter what. Yeah, no matter what it takes. No matter what it takes, man. And I can remember coming to the um, conclusion in my mind, man, that that's what I said, man. That's how I want to live, you know. And I was close, man. I was close. I was, I, I was you know, just being honest. I was, just, I, was, I was up and down. I was up and down for a while because I just couldn't see myself going through it. I couldn't see myself waking up every day to the same type of chaos. And like I say, coming from the streets to this type of living, it's, it's like culture shock times 10, you know. So I had to lock in, man, and I just locked in my mind that, 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 that that's what I was going to do. No matter what it took and, and, and whatever, it, whatever came my way, I was going to deal with it however I have to deal with it. And that's the way I took upon doing my bit, man. But I can remember, man, uh, having a visit. You know, I had a visit from my mom, and uh, I was kind of trying to kind of explain it to her what I was going through, you know, emotionally, you know, spiritually, or whatever. And I, I could just remember looking at her, man, and, and listening to her and the words that she said to me to encourage me that you know things would get better. You know, she a Christian woman, and she was like, "It's gonna get better." You know, we 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 ain't gonna give up on you. You just gotta keep on keeping on. Things gonna change. You know, it's gonna work itself out. You know, we don't know what lies ahead, and all of this and all. That. And the words meant a lot, but also just looking at her meant a lot to me, and it made me realize, like I say, I I got to live no matter what because my mom believed, she believed, so I gotta believe. I gotta believe, you know, and um, I knew how devastating it would be to her if I didn't, you know what I'm saying, if I didn't fight, if I didn't survive, if I gave up. So, you know, that played a major part in my decision making of how I was gonna do this time. So uh, I just set out to do it, man. After that, I, I was locked in, you know, and um, that's what I did, man. So whatever came my way, whatever I seen, whatever it was, I just started working out every day, I stayed to myself. I worked out, man, all day, man. And um, I watched TV when I wasn't working out. I stayed to myself. You know, I ate my own food. I learned so much in a short period of time at the wall, man. They was just doing so much, man. You had dudes uh, making stingers. That was the first time I heard about a stinger, man. How they take the little wire and, and, and hook it up to steel and 
plug it in the wall and put it in water and you always thought to your mind that if you take something and plug it in the socket and put it in the water you get electrocuted so that's what i always thought so when i seen these things and how they work man i was fascinated i was like what you know what i'm saying but these dudes were so creative and ingenious in there man they came up with all types of things man they would make stoves with buckets of water man and plugged in with charge the water to get hot and plastic over top of it man tight as a drum and they put toast bread on there and toast bread you know put other food wrap it up and and, and, and tad knots in plastic and put it in the hot water and cover it up 10 15 20 minutes man the food come out piping hot you had dudes selling sandwiches and making grilled cheeses and i mean and the food was was was, was piping hot and it was good you know, so you learning all this stuff, man, how these dudes survive, how they, you know, do so much with so little, how they do without the things that we used to. They found a way, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I was learning all these things, processing all these things, man, and seeing just the, 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 the different type of living the dudes was doing in there. But it was, like I say, it was all new to me. So I'm just watching and I'm observing. And I'm doing a little bit of talking. I only talked to a couple of dudes in there. It was a dude in there that he was just as young as me. And I think he might have been like two years older than me. He slept like two cells from me. I used to talk to him every now and then because we was basically, as far as I knew, at least on the side that we was on, we was the youngest dudes in there. You know what I'm saying? So I used to chop it up with him. His name was Tony. Um, <laughs> crazy story about Tony too, man. A couple of crazy stories about him. But I know why we was dead. You know, he ended up getting an argument with a dude one time because the dudes, it was a big thing in there, man, about looking in dudes' cells, which was crazy because we was on the fourth tier. So I told you the tier was so narrow from the, you know, the side that you can go over the bars to the to the cell doors. And the cell doors had bars on them. So they could, you know, it was it, they could see right through. And man, dudes was making knives and putting them on the end of broom handles and sticks. And you walk by, man, and you you ain't looking because you don't supposed to be looking in their cell. They stab you through the door, man. It, man, it was insane. So how are you supposed to be walking in the tier and don't look and see when it might be danger over here? But you don't supposed to look. If you do look, then you're bringing upon the danger. Man, it just was crazy, man. So I can remember Tony got dude said something to Tony about looking in the cell. And Tony was like, man, I ain't looking in your cell. I'm watching where I'm going. Woo, woo, woo. Man, next thing you know, him and Tony supposed to be beefing. Tony walked by his cell one day, man, and the dude said, hey. And Tony looked, man, and he pop and, and hit him with, 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 the, with, the, with the joint on the end of the stick. And he just barely missed his eye, man, barely missed his eye. But his eye was still harmed and messed up. But he hit him, like, right above his eye, man, and it messed his eye all up, man. He was bleeding and profusely, man. And he bagged up and he was hollering and screaming and arguing that dude and blood coming all the way from him. And he was like cussing him out, dude, cussing him out. Say, I told you about looking at my cell. Whoa, whoa, whoa. La, 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 la. So he bleed, man. No help coming. Like I told you, ain't no help coming. He actually had to wait till we ended up getting locked down, being in the cell when the police come around. And he bleeding like that and, and telling the police he need medical attention. The next time I seen him, man, he was gone for like two days. The next time I seen him, man, he had a patch on his eye and everything. He didn't tell what happened. Woo -woo, they didn't know. But the dude was still in there. But the dude never came out of his cell while Tony was there. You know what I'm saying? And see, it was crazy on there, man. These dudes was doing all types of stuff, man. These dudes were, you know, you locked in your cell and they opened the doors. You could come in and out. But you could also buy a pad lock, a master lock yourself and put it on your door. So, you know what I'm saying? Even if the police open your door when you were there, nobody could get in because you had the pad lock. But, man, these dudes, man, would, would, would walk up to your cell, man. They was beefing with each other, man. They would walk up to your cell, man, and put their own pad lock on your door and lock it and just take baby oil and squirt it all in your cell and lighter fluid because they had the Zippo lighters back then. And they would take the Zippo lighters, man, and, and, and throw all this uh, lighter fluid and stuff in your cell, man, because they sold lighter fluid at the time for the Zippo lighters. And they would squirt that baby oil and then uh, Zippo and set your cell on fire, man. Set your cell on fire while you in there. And I told y'all how small the cells is. And they got the beds in there, the mattress in there with, with cotton inside, the little plastic mattress. All of that stuff was flammable. And they set your cell on fire, man. Dudes was in there getting burnt up, man, getting third degree burns, getting burnt to death. I mean, it was just insane. You see what I'm saying? So you like, 
it, it's just like I say, it's just a crazy mindset for you to understand and be able to comprehend unless you in there. And then when you in there, you really can't even comprehend it then because it's just overwhelming. You see what I'm saying? Only people that knew this and was able to comp these dudes had already been seasoned vets. They had already been through this. They already knew this lifestyle. They had already lived this lifestyle. But to be in this stuff, man, seeing it at a young age, man, it it, 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 it would twist your brain, man. You know, then you got, you, you had all of that to deal with. Then you got the uh, infestation to deal with in there, man. You had rats in there, man, that as big as cats. Big as cats, man. They come in your cell at night, man. They looking for food. They smell food. They get all up on your locker, man. They can jump on your bed. It was insane, man. Dudes used to take plastic and take the plastic and tape it around their cell all the way up to waist high and tape the whole cell down because, like I said, it's bars. You can stick your arm through them. So they used to take plastic all the way down their cell, seal it all the way at the bottom of the floor, and Line soda cans and stuff up there so if a rat or something bust through the plastic they knock the soda can down and wake them up I did it myself you know what I'm saying because I was definitely ain't want them up in my cell I had one up in my cell one night he was up on the locker trying to get up in the bowl of, uh, I mean the uh, box of cereal and I'm hollering at him and screaming at him throw a boot at him man the rat was so big he didn't even run he turned around and hissed at me saying, and I'm like oh Goodness, I'm in there. I'm, I ain't gonna tell you no lie. I'm, I'm standing up on the bed. I'm scared to death. You understand me? I'm like, man, this is crazy. So it, it, it just, like I say, man, it, it, it was it was different, man. It was real different. It was an eye opener. But at the time, I'm not seeing it like that. I'm seeing it like I'm just living in an insane world. But later on, doing my bit, I realized these things were, were was 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 monumental in my learning process. It, it was it was a need to know, you know what I'm saying? And because I started off at the roughest place they had. I started off at the roughest place they had. So it was these things that I needed to know. I needed to understand. I needed to process. Because moving forward, <coughs> if you move forward with false uh, uh, belief or... or, 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 or misunderstanding of what really goes on in prison and then you're going to be relaxed you're going to be comfortable and you're going to end up in a situation and before you know it the situation is going to be irreversible you can't stop it you know so if you learn some of these things and you see some of these things you know how to react when you see some of these things coming at you that you may not know the con the larceny the, you know the bs you know, you know to stay away from it, know not to entertain it, know not to even listen to it. You got to cut it off at the rip. Look, bro, I ain't even trying to talk to you. I, no, I ain't trying to buy nothing. No, I, don't, no, I ain't trying to learn this. None of that. This is how firm you had to be. You know, trying to make friends in there, man, it's, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time because everybody got an angle. Everybody is looking for something. Everybody is trying to get ahead. And, and man, uh, whew, man, that wall, boy, I'm trying to tell you right now, it was different, different, you know what I'm saying? Beware of the Bethlehem, it was everywhere. Everybody had one, everybody willing to use it, everybody walking with it, you see what I'm saying? So you were in ultra danger at all times, at all times. One missed word, one bump, one false move, one look, and you could be in, a, in an altercation that might cost you your life. An altercation that might cost you your life, you know? And I tell people all the time, they say, yeah, well, man, this, you can lose your life anywhere. Okay, well, you can lose it a whole lot faster when you're in a confined environment where everybody is irritated, frustrated, suppressed, depressed, you know? And, and that, that makes a great difference, a great difference. Then you got people in there that ain't got nothing to lose. You got people that ain't gonna never get out. And they know they're not going to never get out. You got people in there that has no interest in getting out because they have adopted the lifestyle. You see what I'm saying? So, man, you know, like I say, it was a growing experience. It was a process for me. And um, I was doing the best I could do, man. I was doing the best I could do, man. Um, I, I just, like I say, I could see, I saw things in there that I had never seen before. I knew that it was going on because you heard about it in your mind, you heard about it, you know, or you watched it on TV, you say, this go down, you know, dudes, yeah, dudes was getting raped in there, dudes was losing their manhood in there, they was weak, dudes was taking advantage of them, um, 
Dudes was coming at him with all types of con, all types of uh, uh, larceny, and dudes that were scared to to fend for themselves because of the violence that they seen. Because of it's gonna do one or two things to you when you see that type of stuff. It's gonna make you so petrified and so scared that you don't want it to happen to you, and you may go in your shell if you ain't got the heart to just say, "Well, I'm not gonna let it happen to me," and or it's gonna make you be that way. Where you say to yourself, I ain't gonna let this happen to me, no matter what. You know what I'm saying? You may not have never even contemplated taking a life, but when your life is on the line, then your whole mindset is gonna be different. You see what I'm saying? Do you wanna take a life or do you wanna have your life taken? That's what you end up having to ask yourself when you're in prison. Especially you in a, and you in an environment like the wall, that's what you want to ask yourself. Because don't nobody care that you ain't looking for no trouble. Don't nobody care if you in there for something you did or didn't do. Don't nobody care what your religion is. Don't nobody care what your color is. Don't nobody care about who your family is. They care nothing about that stuff, man. It makes them no difference. None whatsoever. Period. You know, so you got to lock it in in your mind how you going to live and how you going to do this bit and what you gonna go for and what you not gonna go for. And it, it, for a lot of people, man, that choice is, is hard to make because they don't have it in them to, 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 to fight. They don't have it in them to draw blood. They don't have it in them to be in battle. They don't have it in them to, to say to themselves, whoever comes along, I don't care who they are, how big they are, whatever they are, they gonna have to kill me. They don't have that in them. If they feel like they can negotiate for their life, they can be kind or people gonna have mercy on them. It ain't no mercy in prison. It ain't, I ain't never seen none. In 33 years, I ain't never seen no mercy. Never. I've seen dudes beat dudes that was handicapped. I've seen dudes beat dudes with one arm. I've seen dudes beat dudes that was blind. I've seen dudes beat old people that was 60, 70 years old. They don't care. They don't care. And they, and they ain't looking to justify it to nobody. They're going to do what they do. And if you got something to say about it, then you in an altercation. So that's prison. That's real prison. That's not TV. That's not what other people telling you. This is what's going on in there. This is what was going on when I first went in there. You see what I'm saying? So that was my mindset, man. I just said whatever it is, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. Now, to be honest with you, I didn't even know if I would make it. I, I just really didn't because I always had, had it in my mind from that first experience that I had in the wall that in my mind, I had locked it in my mind and I know it was a bad thing to do at the time. But I had it in my mind the whole time, and I said, I'm going to killing somebody or somebody going to kill me. Because I knew for a shadow of a doubt there were certain things that I just was not going to tolerate. I was not going to deal with. And, man, by the grace of God, man, certain things he just steered me away from. It was my bit uh, trouble-free. <laughs> Far from that. But I know it's more that could have came my way that would have made me react even more out of my element. You know, so... Those type of things, man, I missed, and I'm glad I missed. The altercations that I got in, the, 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 the difficulties that I got in, I was able to, you know, see myself through it. I came through, you know what I'm saying, basically, you know, with a few bumps and scars during my whole 33 years, but nothing that actually, you know, that was life lasting. I didn't lose a kidney. I didn't lose an eye. I didn't, you know, you know, never own life support. You know, and I thank God for that. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just me. You know, it was it was somebody with me. But I think when I had made it up in my mind what I was going to do and how I was going to do it, and I think that, you know, that I always came from the frame of mind that I wasn't going to be the aggressor. I wasn't going to be the one that started the situation. But whatever it was, I was going to try my best to finish it. I think by me being on that part of it, if you want to use the word righteous part of, of what I was trying to do, that, 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 you know, that helped me a lot. You know what I'm saying? That helped me a lot. But um, I, I, I ain't, I'll be the first one to tell you I'm fortunate. Very fortunate because I've seen things and I've been in things that maybe I shouldn't have came up out of, but I did. You know, but that's prison. You know what I'm saying? That's prison. Every day. All day. Believe that. Thank you, special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure deliciousness, man. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality.
you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.